Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a preview, obviously, to the Red Sox versus Tampa Bay Rays series, where Nathan Evaldi, of course, stepped up big time in the wild card game. Check out my reaction to that wonderful game, that wonderful 6-2 win, getting the damn Yankees out of the playoffs. Um, in my um channel, if you go to the channel, you can check that out. Also, if you enjoy the kind of please like, comment, and subscribe down below or up top at that widget at the end. The Red Sox decided to go with Erod, who has actually been very good in his last 15 games and great in his last seven. If you look at his last 15 games around the regular season, he was at 371 ERA. And then in his final seven, he was all the way down to a 319. He has really been locked in to round out this season. It makes sense that they're going to go with him and then go with Sale. So hopefully you can have two big lefties that step up for you. We'll get at least one win in these first two games. And then the Red Sox can go from there um, as time goes on in the series. And they're back in Fenway in Boston and figure out, I would assume, will be Evaldi then back again in the third game and then figure out who's going to go in the fourth game when time goes on. But this Red Sox team, the key for them is obviously as the Rays, it seems like they're going to have Sale. That's not fully confirmed yet according to MLB, but go game two where the Rays have Shane Boggs go in game two, which would be with Chris Sale if he goes. Tonight they have Shane McGlanahan. Um, going. So two Shanes going in the first two games. Obviously, that wasn't intentional. Uh, that's an interesting thing just to see. Um, but they got two good pitchers going, just albeit young and less experienced than the Sox two pitchers, which are Chris Sale and Erod. So the big thing for the Red Sox is obviously with Nathan Evaldi emerging and really getting better with age, you have Chris Sale back. Obviously, you have Erod, who played very well to round out the season. You also have Tanner Hoke, who's the wild card guy who pitched well of course, in that game as well, um, you can use him as a starter or a reliever. So you got options when it comes to starting. The big thing with the Red Sox is they need the bullpen to continue to perform as it did as such in that wild card game. And then they could be set and they can be one of the more dangerous teams as well. Because on paper, they obviously have a great offense, even with J.D. out. They still have a good offense. Christian Arroyo, yes, he hasn't started many games since the middle cliff of the season other than the last game in the wild card. But He's been good this year filling in off the bench. So now it's time. There's been unlikely heroes in the playoffs before, so there's time for guys to step up. And uh, obviously, Verdugo, the guy we got from the Mookie trade, he looked very good in the wild card game, so I look for him to continue to have great success in the playoffs. But the Red Sox are going to need that bullpen, because when it comes to the Rays, the Rays have good young starters that get them through, say, the fourth, four and two-thirds, the fifth inning. Then usually they're turning it over to that bullpen, unless the guy's just really locked in and cruising. They're usually turning it over to that bullpen, which is one of the more deadliest in baseball consistently every year, it seems, as time goes on, where the Sox clearly do not have that. So the Sox are going to have to try to pounce early on these inexperienced, albeit good starting pitchers, but inexperienced. Boz only has like three starts in the MLB. McGlanahan is more experienced than him, but still a young cat with not too much playoff experience. You got to try to jump on them early because it's going to be very tough sailing against the Rays' bullpen, and you have a better chance for it to be smooth sailing against their starters. Not a great chance, just a better chance, especially particularly with the Red Sox offense. It is interesting, though, since the Sox have not been as good as you would think against lefties in terms of consistency this year. So it is um, a good, wise decision that they decided to go with the lefty down there in Tampa Bay and Shane McGlanahan. So it's going to be a battle of the two lefties tonight um, when it comes to to those games, and then tomorrow it would be a battle of the righty rookie Shane Boz against Chris Sale, as long as that gets confirmed, and those are the two pitching matchups uh, we would know for now if that actually gets confirmed. But to round out this video, we can preview for the game one who the lineups are going to be for Eduardo Rodriguez and Shane McGlanahan for the two lefties to face. The Red Sox are going to have Kike Hernandez leading off playing center, Schwarber playing DH, batting second, Xander Bogarts at short playing third, or batting third, excuse me, Rafael Devers batting fourth playing third base, Hunter Renfro batting fifth playing right field, Verdugo batting sixth playing left. Dahlbeck 7th playing 1st, Christian Vasquez back in there in this game batting 8th and catching, and then Christian Arroyo batting ninth and playing 2nd base. 
For the Rays, it is one of the Rookie of the Year candidates, Randy Arozarena playing left field. Then you got Wander Franco batting second, Brandon Lau batting third, Nelson Cruz, the good pickup at the deadline for them, batting fourth. Just seems to get better and better and not, he's the Tom Brady basically of of baseball just doesn't get worse with age. Yandy Diaz batting fifth. Luke Lowe, the lefty killer, makes sense. He's in there. Batting sixth and playing first base tonight. Manuel Margot batting seventh. And uh, Mike Zunino batting eighth. And then Kevin Kiermeyer batting ninth, playing center field. Luke Lowe will be interesting. He's played some first base, but he's, of course, more of an outfielder um, where the Dodgers in the wild card game for Beatty at first. He made a couple of nice plays, but they talked about on the telecast. He's not as experienced and as prone to the fielder there. He's just a better hitter. So it'll be interesting to see if some bugaboos there and the Red Sox can maybe get some things going because he's not as used to fielding at first base. But if he steps up and does what Matt Beatty did last night, then the Rays are going to be mighty fine there because he is a lefty killer and just smokes and smashes left-handed pitching. So this is a series I think that is going to be a very good one. It's between two division rivals, which always sets up a series to be very grueling and very tenacious. That's why, of course, the series I'm going to preview tomorrow between the Dodgers and Giants is going to be ridiculous because it's the first time ever, and it's a rival in the division. This is one, too. It's not the Red Sox and Yankees like the wild card game is, but with how good Tampa has been light lately, this rivalry has kept building, 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 and getting better as the years have gone on, and I think this is going to be a hell of a series. In this one, I can't really make the prediction, honestly, because I feel like in order to predict this series, you really have to see how it goes the first two games, if the Red Sox bullpen stays consistent as it did in that first game and actually starts showing some consistency and success, plus what the buttons core pushes since you do use starters out of the pen, of course, in the playoffs because it's all hands on deck to win that particular game and worry about tomorrow the next day. So it will be interesting to see what the Sox do there, like I said about Hoke, who's kind of their secret weapon when it comes to that facet of the thing. So I think the Sox have a chance in this series, but it's all going to depend how they start and how their bullpen looks early on. If that bullpen looks shaky in these first two games, that's when I'm definitely going to have to say, unfortunately, that it looks like the Rays will probably win this series. But if that bullpen continues to look like the wild card game and actually looks successful in this first couple games, I think this series will probably go the full five and the Sox will have as good of a chance as any to be able to win it as long as that pen stays like that. I hope you all enjoyed this series preview. Go Red Sox. Keep the winning ways going after getting those Yankees out of the playoffs. Hats off to you for that. Now keep the winning ways going. This has been Sportsman News. I'm Joe Boric, a series preview to the Red Sox and Tampa Bay Rays. If you enjoy the content, subscribe down below or at the widget up above. Have a safe, pleasant day, everybody, and enjoy the rest of the postseason. Peace out.